As promised, today President Obama made his nomination for the Supreme Court, and he chose Merrick Garland, a name that I think very few regular Americans had heard before today. And so, of course, we've got his background information as well as a few theories as to why it is that Merrick Garland was the nominee. And we're also going to give you the response of uh, Senate conservatives. They're not buying it, but we're going to have examples for you. So some background on Garland. First appointed to the D.C. Circuit in 1997 by President Bill Clinton, Garland has served as the chief judge since 2013. The Senate confirmed Garland originally on a 76 to 23 vote with 32 Republicans supporting him. So significant Republican support there uh, originally. Uh, now, on the other hand, we have to consider that uh, his qualifications aren't the only important thing. There's always uh, some other considerations that go into who you choose. And so recently there have been a lot of calls, justifiable calls, to increase various forms of diversity on the Supreme Court. And that's uh, one of the reasons why two of his current uh, Supreme Court nominees that made it onto the Supreme Court were women, one being Hispanic, one being Jewish. And uh, Merrick Garland is a white male, also who went to Harvard. Um, and he's also, by the way, on the older side, which is another important consideration that presidents use when deciding who to nominate. Uh, not since Richard Nixon nominated Lewis Powell in the early 1970s has someone at that age, Powell uh, was 64, Garland is currently 63, uh, been nominated. So let's pause there for a second. Um, so uh, I don't know if uh, this makes me a bad liberal uh, or people are going to get mad at me, but uh, I don't particularly care what race or gender he is. Uh, I care only a thousand times more about his policy positions because he, he doesn't vote based on his uh, gender or skin color. Now I know the, the good reason for perspectives and sometimes mm -hmm. that perspective informs how you view the world and then hence does affect policy. I understand that completely. But as long as your policy is already formed and for a lot of justices, especially at the age of 63, mm -hmm. we kind of know what we're getting. Okay, uh, so I need the policies to be yeah. correct because yeah. this is not a we're having fun and we'll get a little bit more diversity at this party or even serious issue like party uh, diversity inside an office or a company. This is the Supreme Court of the United States. They make monumentally important decisions like Citizens United. Do you get to bribe our politicians or don't you get to bribe our politicians? So you'll excuse me if I care less about their race or gender than I do about their positions. And the one thing I do care slightly about in, in what you mentioned there is that he's 63, which means that we'll uh, a liberal justice would be on the Supreme Court, if all things being equal, less time than if he was 53. That's a decade yeah. more. Or 49, like another one of the high profile potential nominees. Right. Now, uh, that is if he were a liberal justice. And now, uh, having looked at his record, I'm not at all convinced he is. Not at all convinced. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and by the way, you know, I do have a tinge of, uh, of feeling bad about ageism, though. Right? Mm -hmm. So, like, if the more accomplished you are, the more experience you have, the closer you get to being eliminated as a possibility for the Supreme Court. No, no, Court. we want you and to have all that experience. We just want you to get it really, really early. Yeah, and so that I feel <laughs> that's a little unfair, maybe a lot unfair, to a lot of the great justices in the country. Uh, at the same time, there's logic in it, because another decade or two uh, for each side it's makes a big, big difference. Makes a gigantic difference. Now, I, I would say that. All else being equal, considering the current composition of the Supreme Court, and especially considering the historic composition, all else being equal, he should increase diversity. I, I mean, you have to bear in mind that he has significantly increased the diversity with his other uh, uh, appointments. And also, everything isn't equal. He doesn't have 1,000 different nominees to consider. He has to thread a million different needles that have been thrown up unnecessarily by the Republicans on trying to find someone who has some small chance of actually being confirmed. And it could very well be that there were other uh, considerations that he would have loved to have made um, that would have uh, added diversity of various different kinds, and they just wouldn't have had a chance. And you should also bear in mind, as we're going to get to, He's not necessarily nominating Garland because he thinks Garland is going to get on. He might be doing it to pave the way for someone else, someone more liberal, someone who would increase diversity on the sure, court. Sure, I know. But, I've been waiting seven years for those more liberal positions. So well, our, they also they brought up Sandoval. Yeah, yeah, they brought up a, a Republican as a possibility. They didn't nominate him. Okay, exactly. But so, that that could be part of a strategy. Yeah, or it could be that he really likes uh, center right people because he's center right. Be. Okay. 
Don't freak out, Jenk. Okay. Okay. I'm happened. about to in a now, second. I want to talk about one of, one of his important uh, positions that he's being attacked by the right on as being far too liberal, and that has to do with the uh, the, the Heller case, of course, having to do with uh, personal ownership of firearms. And uh, so Garland voted to reconsider the Heller case, in which a three-judge panel struck down the D uh, District of Columbia's strict ban on handgun possession. Garland didn't succeed, and the case went to the U.S. Supreme Court, where in a 5-4 decision, the uh, personal right to own handguns was upheld. And that is now being pitched as a confirmation of the far right's view of what the Second Amendment is, in their minds, supposed to mean. And so he was against that. Um, and there's one or two other uh, gun cases that they're saying show that he's an absolute anti-gun nut. When you actually look into the details, that's not exactly how it works out. Um, but you are not convinced by that and his other positions. And I have read many, many on the right who have said that he is uh, fairly conservative. On uh, criminal justice, uh, I forget who it was, but they said SCOTUS blog had a, 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 a citation that said that he was to the right of Scalia. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I... You're going to make me say it? I hate this pick. Hate it. Okay. Hate it. Hate it. Okay, so let's be clear, all right? So, number one on this uh, NRA thing, uh, they say a conservative uh, magazine criticized them for voting against the National Rifle Association. So what did you want us to do? Pick the most right-wing judge in the country from a Democratic president? Mm -hmm. Give you every single thing you want? Of course a Democratic president would pick someone who would vote against the NRA. What the hell else would he do? Yeah. I so was hoping that they what a, No, 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 but what a preposterous demand. What an insane demand. The fact that we're negotiating with these terrorists is insanity, mm -hmm. okay? Let's, okay, let's not call them terrorists, let's call them hostage takers. Mm -hmm. Right, they've taken the Supreme Court. Pedophiles. No, come on. No, I'm being serious, yeah. right? No, they, I'm not they, saying is, like, oh, they, 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 they beat their wife. I'm not making this stuff up. They have taken this seat hostage. Now, normally, they say, oh, we should let the American people decide. Well, I got good news for you. They did. They elected President Obama. They didn't elect him for a three-year term. They elected him a four-year term. Two four-year terms. Okay, that's how it works. Now, so they, And they elected him to the second term after knowing what sort of justices he chooses when a spot opens up on the Supreme Court. So I'm not having a conversation with the Republicans on what they would like, okay? And I'm not having a conversation, oh, 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 he, oh, my pick didn't vote with the NRA. You're goddamn right he doesn't vote with the NRA. That's why I picked him. <laughs> if you won, Mitt Romney could have picked someone who does agree with him. NRA, too bad he didn't win, and the American people decided that Obama should be president. Okay. Now, secondly, they went and tried to find a liberal position of his. The only one they could find was that well, he's the against the NRA. That's the only one they could find to criticize. I don't think that that's necessarily the only one. No, but that, no, that's no, the no, no. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. So I assume, I hope Obama is not this. He was horrific. a clerk for, for Brennan. No, no, that doesn't mean anything. Mean that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean no, no, nothing. No, 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 John, it means nothing. Let me explain, okay? okay? So first of all, Brennan from, was a million years ago. At that point, <laughs> Hillary, I'm, I'm, not, I'm serious. He, at that point, decades ago, four decades ago, Hillary Clinton was a Republican running, helping Barry Goldwater. I was a, well, I was barely alive. But okay, <laughs> but when I was younger, I was a Republican. The 40 years ago doesn't mean anything. Larry Lessig, esteemed Harvard Law professor, clerk for Justice Scalia. Justice really? Scalia is massively that. right wing. Larry Lessig is not. That's true. Decidedly not right wing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm who not you clerk for means almost nothing. Okay. Yeah. They have to go back 40 years to find something liberal he did. Mm. Okay. So now you, you know, realize I'm not making the case that he should no, be no, on the Supreme I, Court. No, no, no. I know, I know. Not but this that. is all a lot of horse crap from this this administration that's so appeases Republicans. So, oh, we'll put him in a bad spot by agreeing with them 90%. We <laughs> got you. Mm -hmm. No, 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 you didn't get them, you got us. So the most important question here, let's just cut to the chase. What is his view on Citizens United? Mm -hmm. It's the one thing that affects everything else, and the Supreme Court decides it. Do we know? I actually don't know. We don't know. I don't know. We don't know. So they say, oh, do you have a litmus test? You know what I'd say if, I, if they asked me that? God damn right I got a litmus test. Well, I would say okay. I have 10 to 15. Of course. Test. Of course you don't get... What, what is this conversation about, like, hey, wh why don't you pick our guy? No, no, you pick your guy, I pick my guy. Okay, <laughs> that's why I became president. That's the conversation I would have, right? So uh, then what do I look for? Okay, so he's a prosecutor, so they, uh, the right wing loves him on, on uh, how harsh he is on criminals. Great. 
That'll help criminal justice reform. Now, he's went after Including terrible terrorists. guys. Yeah. yeah, terrible guys. And maybe the Republicans don't like him because he went after right-wing terrorists. Because he did. He uh, helped prosecute Tim McVeigh, the Olympic bomber, who Eric Rudolph, who's an yeah. abortion clinic bomber. He put those guys the behind Unabomber. jail. He went after Unabomber. Unabomber's not right-wing. He's a nut. The other That's two true. were literally right-wing terrorists. So maybe they don't like it. They don't They get touchy. I would I don't say more know. that he went I don't after know. white terrorists. Okay. Because I would say that non-white terrorists also generally right-wing. Okay, so uh, that's true too. Okay, but okay, uh, uh, th there I'm I'm needling them. Okay, so that's not the real <laughs> issue with them. Okay, so uh, so you look at all right, w if he's such a uh, you know tough on crime, doesn't care about criminal justice reform, put away, put him away, put him away. The only thing you could find that's a liberal position is that he kind of doesn't like the NRA. Okay, then I look for what's the most important thing. What does the Chamber of Commerce think? Because the Chamber of Commerce and, mm. and several other business groups, including the National Association of Manufacturers, they tell you, is the guy pro-corporate going to give us everything I, we want or not? They have decided that they're going to stay out of this fight. <laughs> you know what that means? Green light. Yeah. Okay. So now let's talk about uh, what some uh, more indications about how he's going to rule in that way. R. Bruce Justin is a top lobbyist at the Chamber of Commerce. He says, oh, this quote is damning. Not of Garland, of the whole system. He says, when you look at the business issues, whether it's Ruth Bader Ginsburg or Samuel Alito, it has not mattered much. Yeah. So those are uh, the liberal justices that went on to agree with corporate America a thousand percent. Yeah. That's why this uh, Supreme Court has been the most pro-corporate Supreme Court in United States history. It's not just the conservatives. Bill Clinton and Obama, what do they do? They packed the court with pro-corporate, pro-corporate. By the way, one of the reasons is they almost all worked in corporate America. They yeah. worked for white shoe law firms that's, uh, that, that worked for corporations, including Garland. He worked at one of those as well. It's and, and then uh, uh, Justin finishes the quote by saying, they've all had pretty strong established record of being level-headed with decisions they have come to regarding business matters. It means empty-headed. Uh, no, that means... Like they don't question. They do what they're told. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what you get from packing the lower court, or I would say filling the lower courts, because I actually hate the way that packing is used now, uh, with, with pro-corporate uh, judges for 10, 15, 20 years. And then when you go to find, oh, who's qualified, who has the experience, that's who has the experience, because that's all the judges. So uh, it's nothing against Garland, personally. I'm sure he's a lovely guy. And I get it. And it would be a massive improvement over Antonin Scalia, if it came down to that. No, I don't know that. It might I, be I a, feel fairly. No, it might be a marginal improvement I over think, Antonin Scalia. I mean, look, Orrin Hatch, one of the most conservative guys in the United States Senate, deeply Republican senator from Utah, said the Republicans couldn't ask for a better pick. Literally, he said that in the earlier confirmations, not about this, right? Now they're all obstructionists. But he said we couldn't, we literally couldn't find a judge that we would like more would, from a Democratic president. Would Dick Cheney not do it? Okay, so... If Orrin Hatch is beside himself with joy over this selection, mm -hmm. uh, again, in an earlier confirmation proceeding, but obviously it goes to how much he, Republicans love this guy, then maybe a Democratic president should think twice over it. And, and don't get me wrong, it's not just Obama. It's the entire pathetic Democratic establishment in Washington. All the groups have gotten together, they did their little cute little calls, and they decided to be so clever to mm -hmm. trick the Republicans by picking someone they 90% agree with. That's not clever. You fight for your position. You don't look if you're in the minority. You say, okay, by hook or by crook, I got to fight. You're the president. They're not the president. You're the president. And they say, oh, but we're going to take the fight to the American people. Jank. Oh, you don't understand. We're playing three-dimensional chess, and we have those uh, seven uh, open seats on the Republican side. Five of them are vulnerable. And and Kelly Ayotte and and uh, and uh, uh, Kirk in in Illinois have decided that they're already going to meet with them. Wow! Yeah, there's like seven Who cares? That say they'll meet no, him. but you see, the argument for you have to give this guy a vote doesn't have anything to do with how Republican he is. Mm -hmm. It has to do with a president is elected for four years. If you block it, you're an obstructionist, and you're the one causing the problem in Washington. You're the one causing the gridlock. That, that is that, not at all affected by I the totally ideology agree. of the pick. I well, I totally agree with you, but. The decision to make the case to the American people might not be affected to it, but the effectiveness of the decision to take it to the American people could very well be. So the idea is, and look, again, I, I don't want this guy in the Supreme Court, but if you take it to the American people and you try to put pressure on, on uh, 
the, the senators that are currently up for re-election. You try to put pressure on the, the Republicans who are trying to get those Senate seats to put pressure on Senate saying, I might not win if, um, if you guys are opposing someone. Like, if, it's, if it was some crazy liberal or something like that, then he could run based on that that's who I have to stop. It's actually the opposite of putting pressure. It's actually making it in some ways easier for the Republican. Not no, necessarily no. in certain states, no, but what, in certain what, but states John, it would make it easier for John, them. John, what's our best case scenario? That a guy who's 90% conservative makes it onto the Supreme Court? No, uh, I, I, don't know, think, I, I, don't, I don't think that is our best case scenario. Th I'm that saying, is now. That is now. That's our best case scenario. No, the oh, no, three-dimensional no, no, no. chess. The, the best case scenario is that theoretically you drag this out. They do lose Senate seats based on it. They don't confirm him. A Democratic president wins and then gets to choose a more liberal justice saying, we gave you the opportunity for a centrist. You got fucked up over it. The American people made it clear that they want someone more liberal, and then we get someone more liberal. That's the best case scenario. You can't no. shake your head. You can no. say that's not what he's doing, no. but no. you can't say that that's not better. Okay, no, but John, okay, so let's uh, understand one of the things that's happening here. And uh, A lot of the analysts have pointed out that actually the best case scenario for them, uh, for, the, for, who? for Obama and the okay. so-called genius Democrats in Washington that, that love to play eight-dimensional chess is, mm -hmm. okay, uh, we press them on this, they lose the Senate seats, haha, ha, we proved you were an obstructionist. Again, you could do that either way. It doesn't depend on his ideology at all. No, but they okay? still have to lose the seats, though. I know, but that's and the best again, case scenario. I understand that, but again, I'm saying their chances of losing the seats are not independent of who the, the candidate is. I think it is. I think it is. I don't think that it is. No, wait, look. No, no. In fact, I'm going to argue the opposite, that this pick is counterproductive for keeping those Senate seats. Why? It validates right-wing thinking. Yes, if you're a Democrat, you should bow your head and pick someone who is generally right wing. Mm -hmm. Well, then you're saying the right wing is right. Mm -hmm. Don't say that. Say we're right. Wow, what a revolutionary idea. Say I picked the most liberal justice in America. You know why? Because the liberal position is the correct one, and I need to help the American people by putting yeah. a liberal in there. Now, the, okay. now, no, no, no. You have to admit the Democrats in Washington would never do that because well, they no. don't believe. Well, they not, don't believe. Not Obama. Obama. They don't wouldn't. believe. They don't believe that yeah. the liberal position is the correct position. I agree. They that's don't believe why, that's that the American people. No, they don't believe that the American people are actually center left. They don't, they you're don't disagreeing believe. with me when I'm agreeing with you. I don't understand so, why you're no, disagreeing with no, me. No, because you're saying that you can pick up more Senate seats if you put in a right wing. I'm not saying this is the strategy I would use. I'm explaining why they're using okay, the strategy. And I'm explaining why they're morons <laughs> that keep operating out of weakness and out, they of, are. And out yes. of terrible framing. So now, la last thing on this guy. Okay, so far, the only thing is we assume he's pro choice. I mean, if he isn't pro choice, I'm going to laugh and laugh as I cry over the results. I'm going to laugh at every stupid ass uh, Democrat in Washington who thinks, well, let's pick a right winger, it'll be clever, right? But I, let's give it to him. Let's assume he's pro choice and he's against the NRA. We have evidence of no other liberal positions. Mm -hmm. No, so you're going to take a guy who's 100% pro corporate on his record, 100% in favor of this criminal justice system on his record. And then you can say, oh, but he's pro-choice, didn't I win? Well, well I you do, didn't I have win. no idea. But you I, didn't win. That's a massive loss. Yeah. I, I, Theoretically, hypothetically, a devil's advocate, I would assume that Obama has more information about his voting record and his personal philosophy than we do. Yeah, and I have I more imagine. information on Obama's personal philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and his and personal look, philosophy is go Republican first, go Republican second, yes. and then maybe I'll get to a liberal. On a number of different issues. On some social issues, Obama is still a liberal. He's not going to put a guy who's going to overturn Roe v. Wade on the Supreme Court. I know. I he, gave it like, to him. Like, he loves wow. playing three-dimensional chess. Thank you. Do... Thank you for not overturning Roe v. Wade as a Democratic president. <laughs> Aren't you so munificent? Okay. And so I didn't finally. I say he deserves credit okay, based on finally, it. I'm simply saying he's not going to do that. Finally. Okay. The, the brilliant strategy that I was alluding to earlier from the analysts is uh, they, in a best-case scenario, they're right. Uh, they further... Uh, you know, solidify right-wing thinking, but that somehow leads, leads to Republicans losing their Senate seats. Okay, I'm giving that to them in their best-case scenario. And then uh, you think, all right, great, well, they block Garland, so now you're going to appoint a liberal. No. No, 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 no. We have to be clear with their, what, what their plan is. Their plan is then you appoint them in a lame duck session. So either way, the guy's going on the court. That is one way the plan could go. You, you just shake your hand at me as if I don't already understand this, as if I don't get it. I understand that, and I don't want that to happen. Okay. And that is a possibility. I don't think it's necessarily an incredible possibility. Why? But that's their plan. So why do I have no, to come up with a plan? No, that's speculation about their plan. We don't know that that's no, their plan. I, I know he Simply got nominated. Because, uh -huh. I know he got nominated. Mm -hmm. Did a liberal get nominated? No. 
I know that a guy who doesn't have almost any liberal position got nominated, and I'm supposed to make a case for what a genius move that is. Hey, I'll leave that. I'll leave that to the idiot Democratic organizations mm -hmm. in Washington who are so happy with this choice. Oh, we got the Republicans. They can't deny him because they think he's the best justice. Well, oh shit, the Republicans think he's the best Democratic justice in the country. I wonder why they think that. You didn't put any thoughts behind yeah. that. And are you telling me you put him up to lose? I know they, but you, but you don't know Obama. Mm -hmm. You think Obama's going to wait for a more liberal justice? No, the minute he gets a chance with the lame duck session, yeah. Garland, it is go pro corporate all the way. Citizens United, I don't know.